Hi everyone, welcome. Those of you that are regulars on my channel will recognize this piece of plywood here with this fancy design painted on it. This is my outdoor worm, ba worm bag. I have to remind myself to, to call it not a bin, but a bag because it's not a rigid container like what I use down in my wormery, the tubs and buckets and everything that I use downstairs. Here, we're using a couple of these fabric grow bags. I'm a little bit surprised at how much wear this piece of paper is showing because last time I checked in here, which was just a few days ago to drop in a little bit of moisture, I don't remember it being quite so heavily deteriorated. Sometimes when I see signs of unusual consumption of my top coverings, which are usually some form of carbon rich paper, cardboard, something like that, I start to suspect that maybe the worms are craving bedding or some sort of carbon rich food source to nibble on if they're coming up for the top covering. And guess what? If in fact my prediction is true that this system is in need of some bedding, that's precisely what they're going to be getting today. So I got number one, I've got this little trash pail full of a huge bag. These are the bags that the township provides in the autumn time. And you can see this is not a very large container and it's uh, it's full. I, I had to push the paper down into here to make it all fit. And this paper was resting on the ground and I'm treating it as already sort of pre-treated with grit. Cause, um, and that's the reason I tore it all up by hand. I was worried about running paper covered in dirt through my shredder. I didn't want to damage the mechanism with uh, any of that really fine particle matter, sand or dirt or whatever it is. So the food that they're getting, wait, I've also got my collection of leaves here. Not much left in this box. We could use it all up if we wanted to. As for the feeding that they're getting, you can see it's a variety of different stuff, mainly um, potato peels and corn cob that I've sliced into little discs for them. And I think this is some cucumber peel. I've also got a day's worth of coffee in here as well as the coffee filter. So my hope is that with this bedding abundant or bedding rich feeding, we're going to make these little guys happy. Sometimes I see things in my worm bins that I think are made of a material that might not break down. So I usually try to fish that stuff out and I think that that's what that might be right there. So let's see, the last feeding they got 15 days ago was just a bunch of spoiled avocados and they were just dumped right here in the middle, not too deep. You can see we're already beginning to unearth a couple of them. And I mean, I could see, huh, okay. <laughs> finally getting the type of reaction I was hoping for. Everyone else, everyone else I see on their worm channel, they grab an avocado like this and within the shell they've got tons of worms hanging out and I never seem to get that but I think we've actually finally gotten the worms to come after my avocado treats. So here's one that wasn't even really opened up for them. The idea was that they would get into it on their own. Other ones were just a peel. I think that might just be mm -hmm. what was left over from the one or two not spoiled ones. Look at this little Easter egg here. I got a feeling if we were to crack this open, this thing would have a lot of worms in it. I don't know, should we? <laughs> I don't know, it almost seems like if we don't do it now, it might never happen, right? So let's just take a peek and see what we got here. Eh, not bad. You can see that they're definitely working the material down. Let's see, can we eject the occupants? Oh. There aren't even in, as many in there as I thought. Maybe there's even more here on the lid <laughs> or the one piece that sort of cracked off. So we've got ourselves some intact pieces there. It used to be a whole one, but I figured, you know, we got one here that's in really good shape that's intact. Here's another one that's pretty much intact, except this one, it's interesting. It's jam-packed with castings, which probably means the worms have been in here. Oh, there we go. Nibbling what's inside and leaving behind what they leave behind. <laughs> and here's the seed or the pit or whatever they call the uh, the thing inside of an avocado. So yeah, these avocados have been sitting around for some time now because usually a fresh seed from an avocado does not break that easily. 
So I was a little bit surprised that I was able to split that one down in the middle. All right, got a whole bunch of little hitchhikers all over my arms here. <laughs> and I never thought that I'd get such a kick out of checking out the feeding area that consists out of avocados, only because I've had such a poor track record with avocados. But it is also fun in this bin to finally see sort of a little bit of a worm party happening because last time we came in here it seemed like the material was all very ah there we go how do you like them bananas let's put them back in the shell <laughs> that's fun yeah it seemed to me like the last check-in on this bin was not very rich in worm sightings there was just a whole bunch of bedding material in there that just seemed to blend in with the appearance of the worms themselves so even if they're worms right in front of us in the video it seemed like all we were seeing was just a bunch of bedding gosh I didn't realize I had so much avocado they were kind of in a little bit of a pile when I dropped them in here and I didn't like take inventory of how much I was feeding it just seemed to me like sort of a generic pile of avocado and I didn't know how much it was exactly but it does seem like we have a few of them in here and the stuff will continue to break down but they're gonna be getting a pretty good size feeding today and you know my idea for feeding today was going to be a little different from what i usually do in my outdoor worm bag my outdoor worm bag it always just seems like feeding down the middle is the most obvious and you know sensible thing to do i don't know why <laughs> but i've thought that maybe it would be a good idea to establish a, a feeding zone that's off center and up against one of the edges and i, I guess it's because in recent videos on other worm channels and we did a little bit of the topic here too, but there's been a lot of talk about how materials within the worm bin heat up. And I think uh, I think one of the best examples actually showed daily check-ins with a thermometer showing the actual temperature of the bedding, and it was uh, it was significant. It was hovering right up there around 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which I don't know probably translates to about seven what 37, 38 Celsius. I could be getting that wrong. If it is wrong, I'll probably flash some text on the screen to correct myself. So it's, yeah, warm and probably more warm than the worms like. So I worried that I was forcing the worms out of the center of the bin, possibly because of some um, heat that I had generated, even in here with a bunch of that crabgrass bedding I had used recently. Kind of forcing the worms to the outer edge, and sometimes the outer edge in this system gets a little bit dry. Then it kind of seems like now I'm forcing the worms to choose between being too hot or too dry. <laughs> and that just seems like it's not right, you know? So my thinking here was maybe to provide more of a retreat space of the existing material into which the worms can move in should they find the new addition of what I'm giving them to be hostile in any way. So that's why we're gonna position today's feeding a little bit off center and it's good that we've got a coffee filter to mark where we last fed because that's the tradition in my worm systems i'm just taking this as an opportunity to see how dry the material around the edges have been since we checked in here we um we did find the outer edge material to be a little bit dry and when it all got blended in it concerned me that maybe the material in here would be a little bit too dry throughout so you know combined with the fact that it's been terribly warm here over the past couple weeks. So I have been checking in on my outdoor systems, even though normally I wouldn't do so. And it was to add a little bit of moisture, grab my garden hose and spray out all the hot water in the tube that's been sitting out in the sun so that I'm getting nice cool water to spray in and trying to cool the bin down while at the same time introducing some moisture. And I think that's probably why the system's doing pretty good now. You know, with that plywood covering, it receives very little natural moisture because it uh, it kind of forces all the moisture that's falling in here from the rain to make its way out to the edges and maybe dampen the outer edges. But it doesn't even seem to do that because that's where we find the most dry material usually. I am pleased to see how nice the material is throughout, though. I guess it does help that I come in here once in a while lately to apply a little bit of moisture. And I think even last time I might have been hinting at my suspicion about um, the loss of worms in here because of heat or whatever. And it doesn't seem to be the case, you know. The worms are a little bit small, maybe because there's been um, perhaps not as much moisture available to them as 
could have been. I think that's one of the main reasons you see small worms is that they just they're just not getting as much moisture as they normally would so they're a little bit dehydrated but still gonna do your bidding all right I feel like I've taken a great amount of time here to examine this system before feeding but it was interesting to see how things are looking and I guess it was also nice to see that there's a good number of worms in here so we're just gonna kind of arbitrarily choose a section of the bin where we're going to build up a really good size space for them to hang out because that's the other thing I've been wanting to do is to significantly increase the size of this this bin and it just seems to me like we're nowhere near its capability all these little worms could very easily spread out into a much greater space I'm sure you're probably thinking the same thing or at least some of you are <laughs> so for the, all of those of you out there thinking that this is a long overdue thing, I'm sure you're going to be happy to see the introduction of a whole lot of bedding to complement this nice little feast that they're going to be given today. And it does almost look like we're about to set up uh, about half of the system with fresh materials. I think this is the stem of a, some grapes maybe. Other than that, I can't say I recognized any of the other leftovers I bumped into. Perhaps I saw a banana stem or something, or I don't know, maybe some weathered leaves, but not a whole lot of anything else. Yeah, maybe a few sticks, a few uh, bits of material sometime get into my outdoor systems, such as sticks. So that'll be fine too. All right, let's get cooking here. We're just dragging our feet now, right? How's this going to play out? We're going to drop in, I guess, a little bit of sort of natural stuff at the very bottom. And I'm not going to introduce any moisture into here, too. I'm pretty confident that the, the foods are going to provide a good bit of moisture in here as they thaw out. They're all from the freezer with the exception of the coffee. And then the paper, I feel like I could be super generous because there's a lot in here, even though it might not seem that way. I kept sort of running out of room, so I kept pressing the paper down and squashing it into this little container. So it is pretty tightly packed into this thing. And it's, uh, I don't know, I wasn't going to use all of it, but it's certainly available to us if we want to use as much as we want, if not all of it. All right. This, these avocados, I think, are trying to speak to me. They want back in. <laughs> they keep rolling off my little mound over here. So why don't we just keep on going with the setup of this feeding area starting with the recycling of the last feedings leftovers avocados you know they like the meaty part of the inside and they'll even go so far as to break down the pits too but those things take time as do the shells so it's um it's an interesting combination of uh fast composting material the the fleshy part of the avocado combined with slower composting things which is the shell and the pit and believe it or not it all goes eventually the worms do break it all down but it's usually probably because they're getting some help you know their worms aren't doing all this on their own they're getting plenty of help from other critters and creatures helping them break down the food in their bin or their bag <laughs> all right they're going to really appreciate this i think such a nice assortment of bedding, you know, we can even grab another handful of this paper to drop in below the food. And with the exception of the filter, which we're going to lay out on top to show ourselves where we last fed, we're going to drop in all this stuff for them. The stuff was frozen, it's starting to thaw out. I'm going to try to scrape everything I can out of this plastic container. It seems like I'm able to get stuff that's starting to thaw out of a plastic container like this much more easily than if it's in a plastic bag. As soon as the stuff starts to thaw, it wants to stick to the plastic bag and half of it feels like it's just staying in the plastic bag. All right. The potato bits are virtually invisible in here. They blend right in, but the corn cob discs are pretty obvious. I don't know, I wanna hear some predictions from you guys. How long are these things gonna to take to break down? I believe it's gonna take weeks believe it or not <laughs> and if there were whole corn cobs who knows how long that would take that would probably take a month or more who knows and I think I, I don't even remember which channel it was but I did see 
what appeared to be corn cobs that had been in a bin for about a month, looking like they were starting to make some good progress. Perhaps the inner portions had been hollowed out already by the wormies, and that they were just starting to break down the rest of the cob. So I think by cutting them up this way, it gives them access to the entire food item much more quickly. So yeah, man, look at that. We pretty much, uh, we pretty much built up half of the container as a new space for them, or thereabouts, almost half, or maybe even half, which I think is gonna be really good for this system, if you ask me. I'm just wondering about the moisture, you know? Every time I question myself about whether or not I'm providing the worms with sufficient moisture, I'm usually wrong. So I'm gonna go on faith here that they've got enough dampness, but I probably will check in here between now and our next video just to see how things are coming along if it does seem like moisture would benefit the feeding area i'll be sure to add some but don't forget you know the uh the coverings that we're using are pretty thorough that were that wood that plywood disc that we're using to cover up with at the end doesn't allow for any moisture to pass through it so the airflow does have to be around the edges whatever's in the middle is going to remain pretty much um, at the moisture level that it's at So any moisture level any moisture out of the existing material will try to escape Will not be able to and then I think just by that sort of recirculation it'll um, Dampen all that dry stuff that we just added so man. I don't know how I end up dragging out a fairly simple thing to take so long but once again, I'm looking at the clock on my camera Showing how long we've been rolling here, and it's a little bit longer than I thought it would be, but that's fine. It's always fun to check in on this outdoor system, and I guess it's more fun when you check in and you do find things looking a whole lot better than they did the previous time. And that's what I found here today. Maybe that's why it took so long, but hopefully you enjoyed watching. Um, we are at the end of the video. All I've got to do here is get things covered up and put away. But I'm not going to waste your time with that. That stuff's boring. Before I go, though, really quickly, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. All right, everyone, have a great day. Thanks for watching.